pain, trauma, and grief make your kingdom feel like a pipe dream. To those in our community who long to see your love and justice expressed through your followers. To those in your church who seek to be faithful and to make a difference while juggling the needs of themselves and their families. And to us who long to know you more and to live as citizens of your kingdom in this place and time. Oh God, may your coming be something we hope for, but also be something we experience moment by moment, day to day. Oh God, we pray all of these things in Christ's name who taught us to pray by saying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever Amen. Well, this morning we want to pause for just a second and welcome those of you who may be joining us virtually. It is time, right, Greg? Good. Thank you. We're glad you're here and glad you were there and that I wasn't too early in my prompting. What a blessing it is to have you with us. I remind you that our Christmas Eve service this coming uh, Christmas Eve will be virtual as well at 5 p.m. and be live streamed. Invite you to prepare yourself to join us around God's table if you are joining us live stream on that Sunday. Also, our choir, a wonderful choir program from last Sunday can be viewed on our YouTube. Invite you to that. We are so glad that you are joining us today virtually and glad you are here. We're about to offer our gifts, the gifts that God has given us, and I invite each of you to give as you can. If you're here today and need a little something to get you through lunch, uh, go ahead and take it if it's there in the plate. And um, just know with blessing, but don't take too much, just enough for lunch, remember, because we need the rest to make things go around here and to share with others. May God bless our gifts. Seated. 
We've been hearing a word from the prophets and a word from the Gospels of Luke during our season of Advent. And today we hear from the prophet Micah. Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. And so I invite you to hear these words from the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah... From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor was brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Amen and amen. What a blessing. What a gift. Thank you uh, to, to Ashley, Catherine, and Jamie for that wonderful offering for us today. I invite you to stand as you're able as we hear this scripture lesson from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, understanding, and living out of his word for us today. You may be seated. Please join me as we pray. Oh, Lord God, we give you thanks for your word, the story of our faith, and especially this part of the story that offers us hope, peace, joy, and love because of your coming and gift to us in Jesus Christ. Speak to us anew your message, and Lord, speak through me and help me to say what you once said. We pray it in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, in the season of Advent, uh, we celebrate by lighting candles and hope, joy, peace, and love, which we will do in just a few moments. But it's also a time that it's always an eager anticipation to move on to Christmas. When I came out of the Divinity School at Duke University, um, I, I was intent on being that pastor. The one that made certain that we celebrated every bit of the liturgical calendar year as it should be celebrated. That meant no Christmas hymns or carols until Christmas. Because Advent was a season that we needed to honor and participate in. That we needed to prepare ourselves and even repent I told you last week that the, the rose-colored candle is there because we're called to lighten up a little bit. I mean, I didn't do that. You look in the rubrics of the Catholic Church, and that's what it says, to lighten the mood in this wonderful season of preparation. You know, that lasted, and I, I struggled, and I, I kept that as long as I possibly could, about a year or so, uh, or ten, uh, who knows, and who's counting? I would try over and again to make sure that the churches I went to understood there was a season called Advent. But at some point, at some point in this journey, when the December the 1st rolls around, the story just takes over, right? The story that we want to hear so desperately. The story that we love to hear of God's uh, coming and showing up and angels Speaking and a baby coming begins to take over. And so it is today. <laughs> it's time for the story to take over and to have its moments of sharing in our hearts. We've talked during this Advent season about the theme coming home, we've talked about the time to go home. And for many of us, when we begin to think about it being time to go home, there's this, oh, whatever word you use, moment in there. For me, it's a stinky word, but I won't say it here. There are a couple times I'll probably venture on it, but, oh, mess, it's time to go home. And there's a bit of anxiety that sometimes that produces. Then we start thinking about the preparation it takes to get ready for home. Or if we're at home, the preparation it takes to welcome people into our home. And then we talked about sometimes there's just a fear of what we've known as home. And we just have to acknowledge that. 
home's not always been a wonderful, happy, joy-filled, hope-filled, peaceful place. And sometimes it's not even a place of love. But we pray that there is a place, that this is a place where there will not have to be fear, that you can come and be who you are in the presence of God and this family, and God will walk with you. Last week I talked about the joy of home, as I even talked about John the Baptizer calling everybody brood of vipers and all of that, and winnowing forks and all of this good stuff. But something new is about to happen, and John proclaimed that. And because something new is about to happen in God's kingdom's work, and in God's eyes, there can be joy. And I suggested that my prayer always is that this will be a place of joy where something new is able to happen in people's lives. Well, today we get to talk about the blessing of home. Aren't you see where we're going with that? Uh, Sunday, uh, Wednesday, uh, Friday, whenever Christmas, when's Christmas Eve? Is that like Saturday, Friday, Saturday, something? Friday. Yeah, thank y'all. I'll be there. Don't worry. I'll be there. I know it, it's Christmas Eve is Friday. By the way, there's only, what, three days or four days now, <laughs> shopping days left till Christmas. Not to give you more anxiety and fear or anything like that, but uh, just to suggest to you that if you haven't gotten a gift for those you love, or at least a card, or at least uh, gone out and picked something out of the yard, now's the time to begin to do that. Some of us can do that, you know. Uh, here's this acre I brought for you this year. Just think of the great oak tree that's going to be for you in the years to come. Uh, Well, maybe. (laughs) Uh, Christmas Eve, we'll be talking about being at home. But today, we talk about the blessing of home. This week, uh, my daughter Elizabeth and my granddaughter, Tillis Ann Cumbus Bird. uh, I know that's not what their parents call her, but that's what our grandparents' father calls her. Um came to be with us and will be with us through the middle of this next week and and the joy of all of that. And then Friday we added the rest of our kids. And But one night we had at home with Elizabeth and Sheila and I. Tilly was already fast asleep on her pop's chest, just enjoying life and loving every moment. Not that I wasn't either, but uh, we watched Four Christmases. Anybody seen that movie, Four Christmases? It's a bit dated. Uh, Vince Vaughn and um, Reese Witherspoon star in it. Uh, it's kind of just a real quick synopsis. Uh, by the way, it's a great movie to watch. It's not family friendly. Let me just say that. It's not family friendly. I get it. I know that. And I know that sometimes if the preacher recommends something, people think that's image. That, oh, it must be a Hallmark movie. No, it's really not. Uh, but we were watching. It does have some similar themes, I might add, at the end. But anyway, uh, so, so uh, Brad and Kate are visiting their parents who both have divorced and have new families. And thus there are four places that they visit for Christmas. Four families that they visit for Christmas. And, and at times it's just hilarious. At other times it's way too close to home. Uh, hearing their conversations. And we find out in the end that the real issue is is that Brad and Kate need to get their stuff together, right? And figure out who they are after dating for years and years, and now they need to make some commitments and move forward. Uh, And at the end of the movie, it turns out okay. Uh, You don't get that along the way. And oh yeah, just one other scene, the church scene, where they're doing the nativity. Swaddle that baby! You just gotta love it. It's classic. Um, uh, Not that I'm telling you to go home and watch it or anything, but you know where I'm coming from today. Uh, What we realized real quickly, and I noticed in this movie, we we all have craziness in our families, don't we? And home's a very interesting concept to even wrap our minds around. I mean, the physical building is okay, and sometimes there are even issues with that. But the people added in and the people we associate with home, it gets to another level of crazy real quick. I'll never forget the first Christmas 41 years ago on Christmas Eve that I took Sheila to my Cumbus family gathering, my dad and his brothers and all of their families 
to sit down for her first introduction to the family. They didn't know at that point that it would only be a matter of days before I asked her to marry me, but I think they probably sensed it because I was like way head over heels with this one. And they could tell. I mean, I even brought them to the Christmas the gathering. So, you know, when you bring somebody home to the Christmas gathering, it, it, it puts another level of stuff on stuff, right? The only thing I remember telling Sheila is, uh, okay, I need to be clear on a couple of things. One, they may say anything. Just be ready and try not to react. Because if you react, they'll just go deeper and it'll get worse. Because I have some uncles who are interesting people. And I said, number two, if you go to the table to fix your plate and you see something on the table that you cannot identify, you had better ask me before you take a bite. Because my Uncle Gerald prides himself on putting stuff on that table and not telling anybody until after we've eaten it what it actually is. <laughs> Souse made hoghead cheese. I'm sorry. Souse made from armadillo. He was a connoisseur of beaver tail. He would eat poke Sally, but it had to be a certain time of year so it didn't kill you. That kind of Uncle Gerald. That was there. So I told her, if you see something you can't identify, you better ask me before you go to eat. And then just know that my family has issues. <laughs> because we all do. But yet in the midst of all of our issues, there's a chance for blessing. I was reminded of that from the movie when Kate finally sat down with her dad who confessed all of his struggles and how he wished it had been different for him. And how Brad sat down with his dad and had that awkward conversation that helped him get what he needed to get out and move on so that they could be in a relationship in a new and different way. We all have those in our families. I mean, good gracious, look at the story I told today. Mary. Mary, a young girl, maiden, we're told, virgin, we're told, because of where she was. She was betrothed to be Mary, but that could happen at 10, 12 years old. And you could be promised to someone early on, but not really do the wedding or consummate the marriage until it was the right time. And that hadn't happened. Mary, who finds out she's expecting a child. And so what does she do? She went with haste <laughs> to Aunt Elizabeth's house <laughs> to spend a few months so that we could sort this situation out. And when she got there, Elizabeth and Zechariah, who hadn't been able to have a child and were up in age, all of a sudden has an announcement to make to her. We're expecting a child. And you know what? The commonality of our stories is that God spoke to us. An angel came and said, you're going to have a child. It's going to prepare the way for the Messiah. And Mary said, well, God spoke to me and said, this child is from the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be the Messiah, the one who would redeem Israel. I don't know about y'all, that's crazy mess. <laughs> that is crazy stuff. But in the moment, in the midst of the craziness, in the midst of all the dynamics that were there, God was able to bring blessing out of the craziness. And God gave them each other to be able to bring blessing to each other.
so that they didn't just go off and not acknowledge or tell the story, but they carried forward to change the world. Oftentimes, things that seem impossible become possibilities because of God's presence. I've experienced it over and over and over. You know what? Uncle Gerald didn't try anything crazy that year. And they were very kind because Sheila was very pretty, I guess, is why they didn't go into their venture of all that they had done with other girlfriends. <laughs> and they thought this one may work. But in the midst of all the craziness came blessings. How do we learn the blessing of home? And the step beyond that is how do we learn to be the blessing at home and offer the blessing? The message of Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary all is to live life faithfully and to simply allow God to work in and through you. Sometimes it's harder for me to put myself aside to be the blessing in my own home than it is for others to see the blessing. And sometimes the most work is on my part, not the one who may have messed up or who had gone crazy. And our families all have those sorts of things that we come into. But hopefully our home will be a place, this home at Wells will be a place of blessing. Not that we understand, not that we all agree, not that we agree with what each other has been or done or are doing, but that we can pause for a moment to be a blessing to each other. Because the world around us is hard enough to find blessing and love and hope and joy and peace. God works in our ordinary lives. God works every day. I can't tell you the number of times God has grabbed a hold of my tongue in my sarcastic remarks and my attitude. I know you don't believe that because you hear them all the time. But there are times when God just grabs it and says, Chris, don't say that. Don't do that. Because in this moment, what you need to be is not judgmental, but to be a blessing and to offer love. And I found how wonderful that is. To accomplish God's purposes in our life, we have to listen. Too often we listen so that we can rebut. And I sometimes have to, to remind my wife that to let her kids finish what they're saying before she answers their question. And maybe just ask one question at a time for me to respond to. And do, do, do y'all do that to each other? I mean, Sheila, did you see anything this morning? What are you going to eat for lunch? How did you do this? Did you do that? Which one do you want me to answer? I can just say yes to all of them or no to all of them. Whatever you want me to do. <laughs> we need to Listen. And listen to what people are saying. To settle our hearts and minds to be able to hear. And when we listen for God, we have to settle ourselves so we can really hear. And not think we have God all figured out already. And what God's going to do. I mean, is this story not enough to tell you that God sometimes sends surprises? And God can do that in our lives. We listen. We take heart. We let it sink in. And then we respond. And that response is always best guided by love. Even if it's a hard word to say, it's better guided in love than in frustration and anger to offer love. Elizabeth could have said, you need to go yourself back home because I don't want anything to do with this. But she didn't. Zechariah went mute so he couldn't say anything anyway. But he could have sent them home. Respond, respond out of love. And in the midst of it all, the hardest thing in the world for me and for others to be a blessing 
is that when we seek to be a blessing and to love first, it makes us vulnerable. It makes us vulnerable before each other and before God. And we have to be comfortable with being vulnerable. Well, I pray that in this season you'll receive a blessing and that home will be and can be a blessing for you. And as we journey together, I pray for God's blessing. Amen Amen. and amen. Sometimes when we are trying something new or when we are facing a difficult decision or when we want to celebrate something or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside us and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home, we ask mom, we talk to dad or brothers and sisters. Close friends, those we grow up with, those who we use, know us best. Know us best. We want them alongside. alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at the least, we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to Cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. And she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing. We seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candles of hope, of peace, of joy, end of today, love, as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for a blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. Amen. Thank you to all of those who have have taken part in lighting the Advent candles for us in this season. What a blessing it's been. Y'all see how well Wilson did that? (laughs) Not quite as well as he plays a dobro, but he did it well. He got it going. We give thanks in the midst of our journey of life that what God has done in this child who we will celebrate in fullness on Christmas Eve and the following Sunday and the days after and every day came to be Emmanuel, God with us and came to give us hope, joy, peace and love and to journey with us each step of our way even through the hard times when things aren't a blessing. (laughs) And is there to continue to walk with us. And so we give thanks. That on the night Jesus gave himself up for us. He gathered his disciples. And he gave them this wonderful meal. To celebrate God's presence. 
and his presence with us always. He took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And he blessed it and gave thanks and gave it to all of them and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. It's because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. It's because of who Jesus Christ is that we are welcomed to his table. Whether we're sitting in here with our prepackaged communion cups or we're sitting at home and joining in by the bread and juice we have there, we're one because Jesus Christ is here with us. Oh Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit as we gather so that we may be your church that we may be a home of blessing and joy. Amen. I invite you to partake the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Today's word is love, and so we've been closing our service by singing this wonderful tune as we share together. You'll notice it in your bulletin as our closing song. Will you stand with me and sing this? I pray that as you go forth, that your hearts will be open to receive the blessing that God is wanting to give you. That as you receive that blessing, you will offer that blessing of love to others. Merry Christmas to you. If I don't see you on Christmas Eve, and may God's presence come in a new and real way and be born into your heart and life. And may you know his presence. Amen. Amen. Amen.